Hey, Real Relationship Talk fam, it's Dana Shea, and I wanted to come on and break out a little bit or a lot bit of our shameless sex series that we are in on the podcast because I believe that we need to talk about some breaking news um, that I just learned about that really affects not only this podcast, it affects many of us, many of you who are maybe standing in your marriage, believing God for restoration. And um, I was truly heartbroken when I read Lisa Turkers's most recent Instagram post where she announced that after nearly 30 years of marriage, she and her husband are, are deciding to divorce. And I, I just have the utmost respect for Lisa. Um, for those of y'all who don't know who she is, Lisa Turkers is the founder and creative genius of Proverbs 31 Ministries. Um, I've been to her She Speaks conference in Charlotte. I've written or written, I've read many of her books, done her Bible studies. She is an amazing woman of faith, woman of God, extraordinary leader, and such a gift, not only just to the body of Christ, but to so many women who have found their voice and who have found their purpose and have found their calling through watching her um, her leadership and her example. And um, I remember I remember exactly where I was. Um, the first time that Lisa made public news that she was going to divorce her husband, um, this was several years ago, and I literally was, I, I was stunned. I could not believe that this woman who seemed like the model wife um, and really someone who I would say that I at that point, you know, ascribe to be like, um, and still do. I mean, I, I don't, haven't lost any, lost any respect for her at all. Um, but I just, I remember sitting there and I remember again hearing, you know, her and she was very discreet. I think she really handled herself in such, um, an honorable way, a classy way when she talked about the real deal, you know, of why she was going to separate from her husband because he had been unfaithful. He had broken their marriage vows. And if you know the story, you know, 2017, around about that time, they were going to reconcile and they actually had a beautiful wedding vow uh, renewal service. And um, as a matter of fact, when I attended, she speaks, art was there, her children were there. Like, you know, I'm like cheering them on because I, promote and support and believe in marriage restoration. My own marriage has been restored from infidelity, but I'm going to talk today, y'all, real, real raw, um, real honest, because I think that these conversations, unfortunately, a lot of times happen on the back end and they need to be had on the front end. I think that there are a lot of Christian marriages specifically, and if you're not a Christian, just bear with me, you'll be able to still glean from this video. But I believe that many Christian marriages suffer in silence. I think that somehow we believe that it is valiant, it is worthy, it is more Christ-like for us to just suffer silently um, with a lot of trauma and things that we are going through, sometimes we might seek out a counselor or not. Sometimes we might seek out a pastor or not. I cannot tell you the many couples that I have sat with who have said to me, we are going to divorce. And I'm like, you you guys, like, are you going to even try coaching? Are you going to try to work this out? And they'll say, you know, we, we just don't feel like it's worth it. And so sometimes when people go to counseling or when they go to coaching or when they uh, they talk to their pastor, sometimes their their mind is already made up. And let me just for the record say that I do not know Lisa Turkers personally. And I this is not in any way, any stretch of the imagination, a judgment on her, on her decision. I applaud Lisa. I will be I will be upfront and say that because she could have walked away the first time. She could have. She was biblically within her rights to say, you know what? You have broken our covenant and peace out. But she decided that she was not only going to forgive her husband, because as you all know, there is a difference between forgiveness and reconciliation. But she was not only going to forgive her husband, but that she was also going to give him the benefit of the doubt and walk through a reconciliation with him. And for whatever reason, he decided that he was going to go back into his old ways. And this is not even a judgment against her husband because I also don't know him and I don't know 
what promoted that. I, I have no idea the details. And again, she's been very um, discreet in how she has presented this information, but she has a humongous public platform where she reaches millions and millions of people. And so, of course, she needed to put out a statement and let people know what was going on. And as I read her statement, you know what? It was different. It was different than the first statement that she put out in 2017. I think in 2017 or 2016, whenever it was, um, when she originally said, you know, that they were going to separate, I heard brokenness. Like I could read that, that document that she put, it was a blog at the time that she put up and I could tell that she was broken. And when I read this post, and I'm going to read it to you, I'm going to read her exact words in case you guys haven't read it yet. I didn't hear a broken woman. I heard a woman who was resolute. I heard a woman who was healed. I heard a woman who was just not going to continue to allow herself to be treated in a way that is unworthy. And I applaud Lisa for that. I think so often in the church, especially Big C Church, people are taught to just stay and pray and just fight it out until you die and, you know, just grin and bear it and it'll be over and, and all of this craziness that really dishonors the covenant of marriage. And I will be the first person to tell you that I believe in second chances and even third chances. I believe that if someone is committed to making a change, I truly do believe that anybody can change. I will always believe that. I will never become pessimistic and cynical to the point where I don't think that someone can change. However, when someone has been given an opportunity for change and they have been graced with a second or a third chance or however many chances they've been given, and then they continue to go back into the same repeated cycles, that's a problem. That's a problem. And I don't believe that reconciliation is possible or probable or even a good idea in certain situations. And so I'm going to read to you Lisa's statement, and I want you to listen to this and tell me if you believe that she's also resolute. Okay, so she writes, this past year looked very different than what I thought it would. It's been a year of waiting, listening to God, grieving, and taking some time off to process and heal. So obviously, this is something that they have been dealing with for 2021. This isn't like something that she just found out on New Year's Day. She posted this actually on um, New Year's Day. So then she continues. She says over, oh, I'm sorry. She says, as many of you know, three years ago, Art and I renewed our marriage vows after a painful separation. It has crushed my heart to know he has broken those vows. Let me just pause right there and say, I love, first of all, she's an incredible writer, but I love how she puts the responsibility where it lies. Art has chosen to break those vows. That needs to be said, you guys, because so often what we do is we excuse infidelity and we excuse the betrayer, right? And we'll say things like, you know, sometimes life doesn't work out the way you want it to. And sometimes people grow apart. And really what that does is it absolves the person who cheated, the person who was unfaithful. It, it absolves them of their responsibility in the whole matter. And so I love that she's not doing that. All right, so then she continues. She says, over the past several years, I have fought really hard to not just save my marriage, but to survive the devastation of what consistent deception of one spouse does to the other. It is brutal and heart crushing to constantly fear the hurtful choices of someone you love. I've had to learn the hard way. There's a big difference between mistakes, which we all make, and chosen patterns of behavior that dishonor God and the biblical covenant of marriage. Y'all, I want to like post that. I want to literally create a quote from the, what she just said and make it a poster. This is so good. It is so right. It is so right. So often we feel guilty for keeping people accountable for the decisions that they've made. And we can't do that. Because when we do that, when we absolve people of their responsibility, when we dumb down their decisions, then what happens is then we enable them to continue in hurtful patterns of behavior that not only hurt them, but then hurt us and our children and other people. This is so good. 
All right, so she continues. She says, I now believe the wisest and hardest choice I can make is to stop fighting to save my marriage of 29 years and instead accept reality. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, when I read that, I had to just pause and like wipe a tear because I, I get it. I get it. There are times in our lives that we want so desperately for something to be so We want to believe with everything that we've got that it is a certain way. But then there comes a point in time when if things don't change, we have to accept reality. It is what it is. And this might not be a marriage situation. This might be like I remember in uh, 2008 when my best friend Sharika passed away of breast cancer. I wanted so desperately and I prayed and we did all the things, right? And we believed and we believed and we prayed and we stood and we had people pray. We did all the things that the Bible said to do. But at the end of the day, when she passed away, it was time to accept reality, That's when I accepted reality, when it was literally all said and done. I mean, all the signs were there. And and, and I know my family and friends probably thought I was crazy because they're like, Dana, she's literally in hospice. She's not eating. All the signs are there. But I was holding on to faith. And this is kind of what I think kind of triggered me a little bit when I was reading Lisa's post is that she's tried. She's done everything that she can do. But now comes the point where she has to face reality. She continues and says, while there is clear biblical justification for my decision to end this marriage, I am choosing to hold most of the details private out of respect for our children and grandchildren and to give space and privacy for my family and me to continue to heal. It's hard to face a future that looks nothing like what I desperately and constantly prayed it would look like. I don't like this reality, but the truth is relationship restoration doesn't always work. I've cried and I've grieved over this and I've waited years hoping this wouldn't be our story. But even when restoration doesn't work, forgiveness always does. Oh my goodness. Really? Like strength. You want to talk about strength? This is strength. Even when reconciliation isn't possible, forgiveness always is. Forgiveness always works. She says, I've never been more grateful for the healing redemption that God has done in my heart through the power of forgiveness. Bitterness and resentment could be eating me alive, but miraculously, that's not where I'm at. With time, prayer, and lots of counseling, my heart is healing. Sometimes the culmination of all our efforts and the answer to our prayers is that God restores us in relationships, and sometimes he rescues us out of relationships. I don't understand why circumstances sometimes go the way my story is now going, but I'm standing firm in my faith and trusting God with every step. My family and I treasure your prayers and your compassion. And I just want to I just want to pray for Lisa. Like I prayed for her after I read this, and I'm just proud of her. I'm proud of her for the many women who have found themselves in similar situations, who have been too afraid, let's just be real. Sometimes it's not spirituality that keeps us in these marriages. Sometimes it's fear, 